All right, so some may call me a masochist, others slightly insane, but I'm actually both. Here again for leg day two uh, during the week with uh, Dr. Mike and Charlie, RP crew, and uh, put myself through the ringer once again, but I'm gonna give it to Coach Mike to break it down on what we did today, the differences between the last workout video that you saw, which I'll link up right above here. If you haven't checked that awesome video, you see it. What I would say a fairly intense training session would be like, uh, especially for myself and these guys, and then uh, kind of what we did today. So without further ado, we got Dr. Mike. Yo. So we have two leg sessions during the week, typically. It's one of the splits we do. Uh, it's probably the, the most common split we do and they are on Tuesday and Friday. The last video you guys saw before this, which is linked, was our Friday workout, which is slightly higher rep. And this one is slightly lower rep on average, though to be honest, hamstrings in that workout come first in the lower rep, quads come after in their higher rep. This time it's the other way around, quads first, lower rep, heavier weight, higher rep hams after. So we started with hack squats, no real good reason to start those than not starting with squats, but for us, the good reason is that we've gotten so strong in the squat, it's really axially loading and compresses the spine a lot. Sometimes quads are no longer the limiting factor, it's how strong your back is, and our backs are strong enough to squat, but we might wanna save our backs for bent rows and all kinds of pulls later. So we start with hack squats. In the you know first set is gonna be between 10 and 15 reps sort of range, which is pretty heavy. Sometimes we go heavier still, where the first set is between five and 10 reps. So we did four sets of hack squats like that. The reps fall off every now and again just because of fatigue. Come on, that's it. Come on. Nice. How you doing, brother? And then after four sets of hack squats, we went into four sets, or sorry, two, four, God, two <laughs> sets of high bar squats. Again, very quad focused. And there we worked with uh, Joey on, do they call you Joey on the internet? You call me, you the rolls off the tongue. Yo, Coach Stat. So, so Coach Stat, uh, we worked with him a little bit because he's a really awesome squatter, he's super strong. We were just giving him a couple pointers that you'll see in the video of keeping his stance maybe a little tiny bit closer, but also really focusing on pushing his chest up and sitting into his knees, into his quads, so that it's a maximally stimulative movement for the quads. The goal in powerlifting squats, in strongman squats, and weightlifting squats, sort of weightlifting squats, there's kind of 50-50, is to just lift as much weight as you can through the full range of motion. The goal with these hypertrophy squats is to do that, but also tax the quads as much as possible. So sitting back isn't as advantageous in that regard. So we did squats for two sets, uh, like 405 pounds for, you know, five to 10 reps per set. Yes. Come on, chest up. 
One more. hamstring curls that's our lighter hamstring stuff but it's towards the end no big deal you know first set is roughly around 15 reps and then the weight uh, is the same but the reps drop off due to fatigue we did six sets I think five or six sets of hamstrings whatever we did last week we usually add a set if we're recovered we were so we did and then lastly this for Charlie and I was our last workout before a week-long deload Because of that, we functionally overreach a little bit and do just a little more than usual, put the little sort of cherry on top. What we did there is we did a whole bunch of what are called sissy squats, right, are basically heels super high elevated, no weight, but we did 60 total squats, basically with less than three to five seconds rest between mini sets, kind of like myo rep squats. Awful, terrible, terrible thing, and huge quad pump, and now we're gonna be essentially doing very minimal stuff, deloading for one week, and then after that we come back and we recycle the whole plan. All right, so Dr. Mike, I have noticed that we haven't done any isolation work to the glutes and calves. What's your philosophy on that? Will it be incorporated in your training at some point or do we get all of that through the training you're doing? Yeah, so for glutes, we get most of our glute training just by doing compound pushing movements with our legs, leg press, hack squat, and especially deep squats. We also do lunges, usually every week, and those hit the glutes super, super well. Um, hip thrusts and all that stuff, you can do in your routine. We don't do it because our glutes are already big enough and it's not really a limiting factor, and we're trying to save our systemic recovery ability for other stuff that's more important, like getting bigger arms. <laughs> um, and then for calves, we don't actually train calves on leg day because we found that if you train calves before you do your quad stuff, it really fucks you up stability-wise for your squats and stuff like that. Um, but if you do them after, you're so systemically fatigued that it's really just a dog shit workout for your calves and it just extends the session. So what we actually do is we do calves before upper body workouts three times a week because calves also recover quite a bit faster than quads and hamstrings. They're just not that big and they seem to just recover pretty well, especially you know within certain volume tolerances. So what's been working super well for Charlie and I for training our calves is three times a week calves, one session relatively heavy, one session a little bit lighter, one session lighter still, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we get just a little bit sore not sore at all every session and we add reps and we add a little bit of weight and we add sets as needed and my calves have grown visibly over the last year when I moved from two sessions to three so it's been working super well remember there's nothing mystical about leg day you don't have to train your whole leg in the same workout you just have to make sure that all of your muscles over the week are attended to if you want to learn more about that kind of stuff and how portioning muscle groups without the traditional split is a good idea look up Eric Helms uh, full body program Jeff Nippard full body program and it's not really the full body it's just it gets the whole body in the week some muscles are trained five times some two some three give that a shot and uh let us know what you think all right so for all you guys commenting about locking our knees out on the hack squat instead of me dealing with you you know this guy he's a jujitsu what belt are you purple he's a black belt okay regardless of what he just said he's a black belt and he's coming for you all you little trolls so let's talk about it yep i promoted myself to black belt the black's a pretty color um, is it dangerous to lock out the knees on the hack squat? It's a two-factor question. Factor number one is, is it chronically deleterious to the structures of your knee to lock out with heavy weight? 
So there may be no acute risk, but over time, does it hurt your knees? The answer is we, first of all, have no reason to believe that that's the case. Second of all, we have reason to believe that evolution has designed the joint to be locked out because it fucking locks out. And lastly, I don't really know anyone who's been lifting a really long time that has been lifting with proper technique that says they can't lock out anymore because they did it too much. Um, so I just don't think it's true for most people that locking out is going to end up hurting your knees in any meaningful chronic way. And if that's true for you, fine, but it's probably not true for a whole lot of other people. It's certainly not true for me. I've been locking my knees out in hack squats, leg presses, and squats for 18 years now, and my knees are healthy as can be, healthiest and strongest I've ever been. Uh, also, your joint structures become resilient to exactly what it is you expose them to, and if you don't just start locking out your knees super hard out of nowhere, you're likely to just get really, really strong knees. The next question is, does it pose an acute risk of uh, severe hyperextension? Um, at the top of a hack squat when you come up. You know, we've all seen that leg press lady video, leg press hyperextension lady. YouTube it if you don't have a gag reflex. If you have a gag reflex, don't fucking watch it because you'll pass the fuck out. <laughs> so she sure as hell hyperextends her legs. The thing is, that is only some very, very unique hypermobile, hyperflexible, like deleteriously so, badly so individuals can do that. Most people would have to try to violently on purpose hyperextend. Even that's hard. That's not what we're doing here. We're just locking out. It's much more gentle than it looks. It doesn't even feel weird on our knees. Look, if we were doing it and we were like, man, that, that really feels weird on my knees. It feels like I'm going to, you know, hyperextend. Of course we wouldn't do that, but it just doesn't feel like that. It's not the case. So don't worry about it. And lastly, stop being such a little biggity, biggity, bitch about all kinds of shit in the gym. Doesn't that hurt me? Won't that hurt me? No, motherfucker. And if it will, fuck off. You're not in for this sport. You're not going to fucking survive anyway if you think every little tiny thing's going to hurt you. Where can we find you? Give, give us the plugs. Drop it all right now. Totally. RP Dr. Mike is my Instagram. Renaissance Periodization on YouTube. Good luck typing that in. It'll probably autofill. And at RP Strength, the company Instagram. Get us there and... Uh, We'll see you. Hell yeah. Thanks, bro. Peace.